Hello everybody, this is Words of Sorrow, uh, coming at you with a uh, Liam White custom video, uh, Anders vs. Forge on Bedrock. Now the reason I'm uploading this is because Liam's content has been a little bit unsatisfactory in my opinion lately, he's uploaded like seven games in a row, customs against Durenti, and I wanted to, you know, give him a little what for so but I think this game is also decent for demonstrating Anders I think this is one of Anders' worst matchups in the game uh, Forge just has everything he needs to shut Anders down uh, it's not like completely unwinnable by any means but you have to you have to know what you're doing so I've opened uh, generator third with a rabbit as you do, kind of the most standard UNSD opener you can possibly do. Um, and I believe I'm going to go double gen hero, as that is probably the best Anders build. With Anders, your tech one isn't very good. Uh, you have to keep that in mind. But uh, if you double gen behind it, and then you continue to play tech one, that is usually pretty good. Uh, because you get a big army going, but your tech isn't too slow, and you have time to abuse R&D and to uh, get all that big infantry blob you build upgraded. Doesn't always go like that, but that is usually uh, the scenario you're shooting for. So here Liam stole one of my minis because, well, you kind of have to wreck your eco if you want to buy up three minis on this map like that. Uh, it's not really possible to be safe. My cat is just on my desk trying to get onto my lap. Um, so I go for a, uh, a barrack, which isn't really what you want to be doing. But uh, you also don't want Forge to have your mini base. I also get a counter steal, uh, and I'm putting up an armory. Now this is a dangerous position that I'm in, but uh, we've each bought three mini bases so it's not like his rush is going to be super duper strong the issue is that well as I already said um, Anders tech one isn't that good Forge tech one is really good um, it's up there with cutter really better than cutter I think with the amount of units you can spam out but uh, fortunately Liam didn't put up a barrack so this isn't actually super scary I think if he had uh, juggled his mini bases and put a raft on this one and then done rabbit hero flamer instead of what he does it would have actually been a lot better but as you can see Liam is targeting the flamer that's wiggling don't do that you want to target the the ones that aren't wiggling here I sack the rack uh, and put up a second generator probably a bit too early because, well, my Spartan didn't really get out fast enough to cover these uh, flamers. And then here's a Forge Hog. Um, fortunately, he doesn't have any flamers, so he doesn't have that much base damage. So as long as this turret gets up, um, my main is fine because I also have my Spartan. What's not so good is that I have a little bit of an issue with pop right now. I have like two units. I do have a node, but I need to get my units going. Uh, he's gonna try to stop this, but fortunately R&D gives you their shields, so even though it gets up with just a little bit of health, it gets that shield. Uh, also, R&D 2 will give you a bigger shield than R&D 1. I think that's something a lot of people don't. Uh, realize. So if you're playing defense, sure, mines can be good, but uh, R&D 2 is actually technically also a defensive clear power. And I hardly ever go mine second point. If I go mine second point, chances are I'm going to double back for R&D 2 on third point, because I just feel like there's no point in playing Anders without R&D 2. But I have grenade throw now, so I'm holding this push. He uses heavy metal. It's kind of a new thing people are uh, doing with Forge. They're going hev heavy metals, second point. And he gets my Spartan. 
I use drop turret, uh, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, the forge shot gets away, but on a very low health. He's building snipers now for some reason. I think that's just a complete waste of his yellow. Um, I'm double gen, just upgrading my pads, trying to get marines out. And for that whole time, the, I hadn't built anything on that mini, which wasn't super good, but I was trying pretty hard to hold the rabbit and hero. So that's just part of the unfair matchup. Uh, that we both bought the same amount of minis, but he can get so aggressive on me. Uh, and he didn't even build Rax units there. Now he is, but it's a bit late. He missed his window. Um, I have a turret, so in the time it takes for him to focus down a turret, I can build another one. I have my hero back out. I have some grenade marines. Rabbits won't be as big of an issue. But still, I don't have that much pop. But I'm thinking I need to get up an expo because uh, a lot of this matchup also kind of revolves around Andrew securing the expo. It's really hard to do. If you're going to hog mirror, you literally can't expo because Forge has enough money to expo and it won't cut into his unit pump. Andrew's does not. And the moment you stop spamming, you're uh, going to get outnumbered. And you'll lose. Uh, that's why I prefer playing infantry into forge, not hogs. Uh, if they don't play well, you can win with hogs, but if the forge plays perfectly, a hog versus hog, Anders will lose every time. So, I think infantry is the way to go. Um, forge could also play infantry, especially on a map like this, but uh, I think most forge players will play hog into Anders, especially because uh, infantry really struggles against the retriever. That said, I don't like the retriever in this matchup. I think, I don't like the retriever in general really, that's something that I think people may be coming around to, but I very much prefer uh, just abusing RNG and using like network, uh, turret drop and arc defense on one big push and trying to win with that and continuing to abuse R&D behind that and then I can get Kodiak and then the Retriever because the Retriever is really good to drop in when you have a bunch of Kodiaks and you can start spamming bases and you know, you're, you're actually a threat at that point um, and the Retriever is more of like a repop because you have a, a big eco then but the issue mainly with the retriever despite it regardless of it being kind of like a mediocre unit in my opinion is that you have to stack all that blue or that all that blue and all that yellow um, and you're not abusing R&D when you do that you're hoarding yellow instead of using your primary leader power so that's another issue anyway um, I get my tech to Douglas and I'm instantly pushing with it you want to make sure you're not just sitting back with uh, your upgraded units as Anders because these timings are timings that no other leader can really hit sure right now I don't have forge eco but I do have CT Marines and Douglas uh, and that timing is pretty strong so I'm just gonna be going CT with a single hog pump and I'm getting a barracks up so that I can upgrade my infantry levels. Since, well, they're cheap. Um, it'll help me a lot against uh, the Forge Hog, any Gales, really anything in general. And it actually will also help me towards my fifth point. Since buying upgrades does that. And that's another thing. Uh, back in the day, I think R&D was super under abused. Somehow that stun missed. I don't know how. That Forge Hog could be dead. Anyway. Uh, back in the day when the R&D was like super OP, it was definitely under abused. Just because, well, when you upgrade something, it goes towards your LP XP. So. And even now I feel like it's under abused because everyone's saving up for the Retriever instead of using the leader power. But here I think... Liam fell into his old issue 
where he just wasn't buying units. Uh, that's typically what he does. In the early game, he'll buy units, and then in the mid game, he just stops. And, uh, well, Forge needs to out spam Anders in order to win. He needs to have, like, a bunch of hogs running around, making it hard for you to do anything and just smother you. But Liam's just not not that type of player. He's more of, like, a like a drop guy. You know, he stacks a thousand supplies by the seven minute mark. So, if he's not using Kodiak drop or something, then he's just stacking it. And I'd imagine that's what he's doing from his point of view at this point. I'm not sure if he's going to do some all in Grizzly Battalion, so I'm just upgrading turrets on my main. I'm okay with losing my expo because, I mean, he's already lost his, plus. What is he really going to do? He has a hog and a forge hog. Unless he has that grizzly battalion, but I mean, I could always go hijack it. So now I'm pushing. I have network and arc defense. And he, he seems to have nothing. Now, if I had been saving for the retriever this whole game, I would probably have like half the pop I have right now. I wouldn't have any upgrades. Uh, I wouldn't have network, and network is huge. People think the retriever is good. No, network is is a really good leader power, and well, people sleep on it. Arc defense isn't amazing. I've always thought it could be a lot better, but I mean, for a situation like this, it's not so bad. I have vision on these Kodiak. I can just use arc defense, and it'll take care of them if they don't move. So, it's not useless. Um, I think my next leader power, I don't know if it was Synergy or Beacon. I think typically it would be Beacon. I would go into uh, Kodiaks and then the Retreat. But either way, there's uh, me versus Liam. Anders versus Forge. Random custom game. GG. No re. Bye bye.